Jack Simmons goes up with Markedrick Bell, and Bell controlled the tap but knocked it out of bounds, unable to chase it down and keep it inbounds was Sean Doss Jr., and so the Mean Green will throw in on their offensive end. It's James Reese being alert right off the tip to kind of take away the out of bounds, and they're going to make sure that the shot clocks are adjusted. So a little bit of a delay trying to get the ball back in bounds. With the socially distant seating, you can hear a lot of things you never <laughs> used to be able to hear on the court. The Mean Green work it down low, and Zach Simmons turns it over out of the double team, but diving to kind of take it back is Thomas Bell. And a hell ball will go against the Mean Green after they double team Zach Simmons on the low post, and they create the turnover and inbound to get is Sean Doss Jr. to Joshua Johnson to bring it up. Junior out of Glendale Junior College and Phoenix. He's the reigning SWAC Player of the Week. The game deciding free throw in their only win by one at Arkansas State. Stopping his drive into the lane is Simmons. Stopped him cold. Outlet pass to Reese, drives it all the way in. It's a left-hand reverse for the first points of the game. He was held scoreless for the first time in 27 games against number 11 West Virginia, but quickly out of the gate, Reese is in the scorebook. Trying to get him, him out of a three-game shooting slump. Six for his last 32, 16% over the course of Arkansas, Mississippi State, and West Virginia. So a minute gone to the main green on top two to nothing. Baseline, Daquan Morris out to the wing and hitting from 15 feet is Markedrick Bell, senior out of East Mississippi Community College right there by his hometown of Starkville, tied at two. Pass mid lane goes to Bell, one dribble, kicks it back out against the zone and Hamlet against the 1-3-1. Out front, guarded by Daquan Morris. Into the corner, up with a missed three-pointer is Markedrick McBride, or Mardrez McBride, and rebounded by Arkansas at Pine Bluff. And they play about as deliberate a pace as do the Mean Green. Right side of the lane, Mark Hedrick Bell with a cross court feed to Johnson. Into the corner, Morris. Margaret McBride on him. Shot clock down to eight. Back out front, Johnson trying to create against Hamlet. Into the far corner, up with a three. No good as Bell rebounded by Hamlet. And still tied at two, two minutes into the game. Good job recovering from that skip pass and making the Lions use the entire shot clock. Quick ball move, but this time and a lefty scoop by Bell won't go. Rolls off the back of the rim and controlled by Terrence Banyard. Arkansas Pine Bluff trying to get inside before the defense is set. Bell with a right hand jump hook and he rattles it in. The Golden Lions take a 4 2 lead. Preseason, second team, all swack, and uh, he sizes up the defender before shooting. You can see him measure his decision making. Inside the bell, kicks it to the right wing, and Reese knocks down a three. So the struggling James Reese finding his shot, at least here early. Well, after a struggling start last year, he ended up 39% from downtown, so he knows how to weather the storm, James Reese. 5-4, Reese has all the points. With three minutes gone. Johnson, going to set up Doss, who's barely touched it so far. And fronted effectively by Reese, drive into the lane by Banyard. For a bell three in the corner, it's no good. Offensive rebound, and the putback by Doss, stuffed by McBride. Ball goes loose, and it will be inbounded underneath by the Golden Lions. Athletic move by Dosto to play that ball off of the mean green defender and keep the possession going. This will allow Grant McCaslin now to make his first substitutions of the early going. And in come Terrence Lewis, the second, 6'7", junior. And Reuben Jones, 6'5", freshman out of Houston Yates. Dave, you called it, but uh, recollection today from Coach Hodge was seven points on baseline out-of-bounds plays against West Virginia. They worked a lot today on getting ready for the blob. It bounds this time, edge of the paint to Banyard. And the turn around of the paint, no good. Rebound stolen away from Bell by Reese. James Reese, best player on the floor in the first three and a half minutes, and he spots Lewis inside, jump hook, point blank, no good 
undershot it a bit, front rim, and it comes down to Bell. Johnson lead at a jam on the alley-oop. Attempted and missed by Morris, but he is able to get out of the way, and Banyard chases down the rebound of the corner. Bounce underneath to Bell. Tumbling to the floor is Lewis. And uh, for his trouble, Terrence Lewis calls for the first foul. On that alley-oop, Daquan Morris, the senior, a very athletic wing, calling for it all the way down the floor. And when he's fed a pass that good, he's got to make it go down. He just missed the point-blank dunk, even though he had risen to the right height. First substitution for George Ivory is Jalen Lynn, who started the last two games, junior from Collierville, Tennessee. And Lynn with it at the point after they inbound it to Johnson, left side. Straight up now, head of the key for Doss. No shots yet for him. Pass deflected into the lane, picked up by Banyard. Fall away, straight away, no good, missed it wide left. And yeah. Zach Simmons clears. Yeah, and Zach also altered the initial shot, so good defense all the way around. Reese fires, and his first miss is a three from the corner and an over-the-back foul on Simmons going for the rebound. When COVID-19 disrupted everything, we did what we do best. When we could no longer be together, we still found ways to stay close. When the number one goal is to help students achieve their dreams, we overcome any obstacle, bringing education and opportunity for 130 years with a resilient, caring, and creative spirit. The University of North Texas, where education never stops. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification. You're listening to Bean Green Basketball. Full court pressure as the Golden Lions inbounded. 15.45 to go first half. They trail 5-4. to four. Good, Nice job on the glass. Three offensive rebounds amidst seven caroms. Nice baseline cut by Daquan Morse, fed high-low by Terrence Banyard. And a set play drawn up during the timeout works to perfection. It's 6-5 in favor of UAPB. Hamlet at the point. Feeding Reuben Jones, far side corner, Reese. Middle of the lane to Bell, who goes up with a left-hand flip and able to knock that one down and regain the lead for the Bean Green, 7-6. Coming off 12 points against West Virginia. That time, Thomas Bell with a deft move for the Southpaw. Daquan Morris guarded by Bell. Bounce inside, goes to Banyard, who takes steps, shuffled his feet before he could go up for the short banker. Good job by both Reese uh, and getting some help from Terrence Lewis the second. They collapsed on the post, and that uh, enabled the extra steps to be taken. Now here comes a guy to the lineup that I can't wait to see again in person. Abu Osmane has done a terrific job so far both defensively and with his shot selection. Let's see if they can get the ball to the big. Abu Usman down low as Hamlet fires and hits from the near wing. First shot, and Javion gets it to go down, and the lead is 9-6. to six. That's that floater that went away on the last road trip, isn't it? Yeah, he hit 75% between 3 and 15 feet last year. This year it's more like 27%, a miss thrown up. By the Golden Lions, Hamlet works it underneath, and there's Zuzman goes up, misses a jam, 
And the rebound pulled down, heading the other way is Sean Doss. Only his second miss all year, Dave, and that was at point blank range. He is now 9 for 11 from the field. Many dunks thrown in. Up high, Banyard. A hand back for Doss. Finally gets the shot off and knocks down the long two. Averages 17 attempts per game. Our Metzler's matchup of the game. Sean Doss, the junior out of Macon, Georgia. A real player. 9-8, Mean Green. 1-3-1, one, one, half-court zone. Hamlet attacks, defeating Jones on the left side. Underneath, they look for Usman. Never got a hand on it. Turnover. Banyard brings it into the front court to Johnson. Johnson guarded by Reuben Jones. Looks a foot taller. Almost is a foot taller. Doss outside. Back between the circles to Johnson. Johnson can score at a high 16 points in the win at Arkansas State. Inside Banyard kicks to the left wing. And a three knocked down by Jalen Lynn. His first points of the night giving the Golden Lions the lead back at 11-9. Been a nice addition to this team out of Collierville, Tennessee. And shot clock was beginning to become an issue when he hit that one. Guzman dumps it inside for Bell. Wants to get a righty hook. Cut off. Can't get any shot. Kicks it back out for Jones underneath. And Usman rejected by Doss, who went way up. The other way, a pull-up three by Johnson. Won't fall. Rebounded by Reuben Jones. And a chance to run the other way. But four Golden Lions back on defense. Running in the lane. Floater rolls around it in for Reuben Jones. First in. Boy, you love the way he just takes it right down the floor. Got the board and out sprinted all of his teammates and the defense. Great touch. Tied at 11. Jump stop low. Morris, 360 spin. He hits from 10. Took advantage of the fact that Bell had uh, lost his balance and was actually down on a knee when Morris was able to take advantage of it. 12-15 well, to go first half. 13-11 to 11 final bluff. Hamlet tries the straight on three. No good. Rebound Usman. Lost it out of bounds. And uh, back in will come Zach Simmons along with J.J. Murray for the first time. Michael Robinson for the first time in a while. And Mardrez McBride. Almost a complete line change. Only Reuben Jones remains on the floor from the previous set. And the guy that's starting to get some increased minutes, J.J. Murray, will hang back and play a little bit of defense here. Devontae Doolittle. On from Pine Bluff, junior from Hughes, Arkansas, and Alvin Stredick, junior, sophomore from Bay City, Texas, at Van Vleck High School in. And up with a three is Dravante Doolittle, and he knocks it down from the near wing. He had only tried one before that one falls, and it's 16 to 11, and the Golden Lions have the biggest lead of either team in the first eight plus minutes. Jones looks down low, finds Simmons, long stride in, slam dunk. Yeah, taking advantage of the wingspan. Might have stepped a little bit early there, but he's so long that Simmons was able to glide towards the cup and ram it home. First two for Zach, 16-13. Find a way to slow down the Golden Lions. They've hit four of their last five from the field. And shooting 47% now, 7 to 15. And green six of 13. They're patient, and they're, they're making that extra pass. Joshua Johnson driving, dishing for three in the corner, knocking it down, Jalen Lynn again. And 19-13. Dean Green have only one three so far. Mid lane, Robinson, bounce baseline right to Simmons. Turns, dumps it right back, and hammered underneath is Robinson. Misses the layup, and he'll shoot two after a timeout. Have a voice. You, you have, have a, a voice. voice. We, we have, have a, a voice. voice. Our voices can be heard outside of sports. As student athletes, we have a platform. Now more than ever, it's important that we listen, learn, and lead, and raise our voices for change. We can all do more. Now is the time to make a difference. This is our chance. This is our chance to make a better tomorrow. Together, Together we will continue the conversation. We, we have, have a voice. voice.
Hi folks, Chris Fowler here, Noseki's new poor by poor commentator. Hey, a job's a job. Now, onto the poor. Look at it run. The ice cold, refreshing cerveza rushes toward the 10th blue announce line. There's no stopping this crisp and delicious cerveza now. It's at the 11, 11.5, 11.6. Will it reach 12? There it is. 12 fluid ounces. Unbelievable. I'm crying. I'm actually crying right now. Noseki's a most interesting beer. You want to get in some sponsored stuff here? To talk and communicate, and I think that's where they may be struggling defensively, Dave, is just the fact that the extra pass is happening, and the Lions have done a nice job not only scoring with their frontline people, but nine points coming off the bench. Alvin Stredick fouling Michael Robinson going into the break. Robinson's first two collegiate free throws. First one good, second one back rim, and no good. Rebounded by Sean Doss. So 19-14 time left under the 11-minute mark first half. And Green extending their man-to-man half-court defense now. And Trevante Little followed stride for stride by McBride. Hands it over to Lynn, over to the far wing, and a pull up 15, back rim no good by Doss, rebounded by Simmons. Doss who averages just under 17 per game, only two so far. His team up by five. McBride left alone for three, and he knocks it down. Mark Rose did not even take a shot at West Virginia. That one falls. Well, he's had good fortunes against members of the SWAC. He lit it up from downtown early and often. And the only victory here at home so far against Mississippi Valley State back on Thanksgiving night. The six of seven from deep in that game. One for five cents, not counting that one. Answering with a three, third of the half for Jalen Lynn. And right back up by five, the Golden Lions, 22-17, under 10 to play in the half. Underneath, wide open, is Robinson for an easy two. North Texas starting to find some openings inside, but on defense, they've got to rotate and get on Lynn, who has been a 10 toes to the rim three-point shooter. And Lynn firing another three. This one no good, but rebounded by Stredick. Kicks it back out. Johnson up, fake pulls up 15. Left baseline, missed that one. Rebounded by McBride. Fourth offensive rebound, however, and that's one thing that uh, Pine Bluff has excelled at early on. Avery looking inside. McBride to Robinson, back out. Jones, baseline left down to Zach. And goes into his post move. Looping pass, Robinson, right corner to J.J. Murray. Stops edge of the lane, dared to shoot, doesn't get it off. Back out to the point now with the shot clock under 10, McBride. Far wing, Jones. Left baseline, Simmons with four. With three, turns and gets stuffed at the buzzer. Defended to perfection and a shot clock violation. Alvin Stredick, the sophomore out of Bay City, a 6'9", rangy player, remained incredibly patient against the plethora of little jabs and moves that Simmons was trying to apply. But for Zach, the clock became as big an enemy as Stredick, and it all worked out for Pine Bluff. Where it's like Stredick had played him since they were five years old and knew every yes. single One move bite. Zach was about to make, and he didn't fall for any of them. Back in for the main green, Bell, Reese, and Hamlet. McBride and Simmons stay in. And uh, three-quarter court pressure now applied. Down 22-19, 8.45 to go in the half. Joshua Johnson. Standing inside the center jump circle, crowded there by Reese. Feed left side goes to Lynn, who's been the story with three three-pointers. Drives underneath, dishes far corner. Johnson wanted the three. Instead, a feed down low and a miss by Morris. Put back up and in. Arkansas Pine Bluff very opportunistically with the follow back up 24-19. Yeah, Bell underneath really doing a good job with very little angle to get that up. alley -oop. Bell for Zach. Misses a left-hand reverse. Frustrating. And pulled down by Trevante Doolittle. Golden Lions. Back into quick ball movement and a jumper good from the right wing by Mark Hedrick Bell with eight and the lead is seven. Grant McCaslin says let's roll off and sometimes he'll take a timeout to stop the bleeding. Right now he wants his team to operate the offense. Missed point blank shots on this end. 
And uh, three pointers at the other end. Knocked down by Pine Bluff to Story. A jump stop by Hamlet. And he draws contact on a reach by Jalen Lynn. Second against Pine Bluff. Timeout, 7.47 in the first half. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. Are you paying for your checking account? Well, you don't have to. At Guarantee Bank & Trust, we have a better way. With Guarantee Green Checking, you get a free checking account with no minimum balance or monthly service fees. Even better, it comes with a free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, and free mobile banking. And over 55,000 surcharge free ATMs worldwide. Now that's a great value. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for Guarantee Green Checking today at gnty.com. Banking with a capital G. Botham and Associates quote of the game. He told his team repeatedly on defending ball screens, get lower than the free throw line and make sure your butt is to the basket. After the timeout, inbounds pass is knocked out of bounds. 7.46 to go. First half and Hamlet will inbound baseline right. And he made them all recite, butt to the basket. So that's your quote of the game. All right. Memorable. Inbounds to Reese, and a left corner three, no good. Rebound batted around, controlled, and put back up and in by Thomas Bell. Great start by T. Bell, tore it on the glass, and the kind of energy you need down there because Simmons struggling just a little bit underneath. That is the first offensive rebound in the game. With about 12 minutes gone by, 26-21. Miss out front by Morris. Defensive rebound by Hamlet. Bring it up. Try and get a shot off before they can settle back into that zone. Feed to the high post to Simmons. Back to Hamlet. Pulls up. Jumper right wing, and he knocks it down. Well, nothing like getting back home where that shot looks comfortable. And for Hamlet, that was the shot that was devastating from January right until early March. And we thought it was going to be devastating throughout March had the pandemic not put the brakes on everything. Seven-point lead cut to three. 26-23, 6.50. And counting first half. It's been moved by Doolittle, hemmed in by the main green bigs. Back out front, Lynn drives from the point and throws it away. James Reese anticipating, comes away with a steal. All five Golden Lions race back in transition defense. And the main green working for a McBride three, and that's good from the right wing. And George Ivory wants a timeout as the main green had pulled even with a 7-0 run in the last Minute 10, 26-26. Well, the last time we saw Mardrez McBride, he was doing exactly that, knocking down threes. He had been struggling, one of five from downtown uh, since that sizzling start. But tonight, he's gotten out of transition, Dave, and found his spot. That whole break was started down the floor by Reese, ahead to Hamlet, and then to a McBride open three from the right wing. And that's why Ivory had to call the timeout. Prides himself and uh, his Lions on a little bit better defense than they showed there. Nice little run out of the, uh, yeah. the timeout. 7 0. Last mean green lead was 9 to 8 with 14 07 remaining. About eight minutes later, they have pulled even at 26. And after the timeout, working it into the front court, Johnson awaiting him at midcourt, Hamlet. Off to Daquan Morris, crowded by Reese. Right quarter court, spin move, can't shake James. Back into the hands of the point guard, Johnson. And Johnson trying to crossover move to get space in the paint. Can't do it against Reese, and throws it away. Trying to feed Morris, cutting away from the basket, and threw it 
out of his reach and out of bounds. It's amazing, but a, a good little talk to from the head coach can really re-energize a team, and we have seen amped up energy out of the Mean Green since that uh, last full timeout. Under six minutes we go, chance for the first lead in almost nine minutes, and there's Javion Hamlet hitting a runner high off the glass. He has six of its 28-26, nine unanswered points. Reigning Conference USA Player of the Year coming off last year. That's an unstoppable high off the window shot. Fourth straight make by North Texas. Scoring drought now at two and a half minutes for Arkansas Pine Bluff. As Mark Hedrick Bell throws it away inside. Tried to force a pass to Banyard. Tipped up. Hamlet will bring it up the court. Under five and a half to go in the half to Reuben Jones. Drives, dishes. Easy layup underneath. They forgot about Terrence Lewis's first two. Excellent job by Jones to suck in the Pine Bluff defense and then find a wide open man on the right block. So the run is 11 and unanswered points. And a nice save at midcourt. They almost turned it over. Saved by Doss underneath and a whistle. Never been many whistles in this game. Call a kickball on Terrence Lewis, but he did a good job getting the feet and the body there. He was trying to get a takeaway, but ended up booting it instead. Michael Robinson will check in for Thomas Bell. J.J. Murray back in as well. In place of J.V. on Hamlet. Inbounds to Mark Hedrick Bell. And the uh, chest-to-chest defense by Michael Robinson. A missed tip back out to him. Fall away, follow good from the top of the key. And that's 10 for Markedrick Bell, and he ends the 11-0 mean green run. Good initial defense, but then that tip out allowed him to stay alive offensively. 30-28, mean green by two. 440 remaining in the half. 1-3-1 zone for UAPB. Left-hand runner off the glass, no good by Jones. Almost. Captured by Lewis, taken away from him though by Sean Dawes. Dawes still only two points, they force a pass inside, batted around to the deck, go Murray and Robinson. And uh, Sean Dawes, it's a hell of a ball, and this time the Bean Green have the possession arrow. And that's the mechanical engineering major, J.J. Murray, starting the fast break, it got to slowed down by Pine Bluff in that big group, but still, Getting after it, giving up the floor burns, and getting the tie ball that results in a mean green possession. Simmons back in for Lewis. Hamlet back in for Reese. 424 to go in the half. Hamlet bringing it up. Plays catch with Jones. Shavion winding his way. Inden able to dump it off down low to Simmons. Back out front for a Hamlet. This three is in and out. Halfway down Wooden State. Doss control. It's that strange hitch in his delivery, but that shot's a good looking one from the top for Hamlet. Just couldn't, couldn't buy it that time. Four minutes to go in the half. Pine Bluff looking to tie or lead this possession. They've led much of the first half. Into traffic, missing a drive. Mark Hedrick Bell, but he'll draw a foul and shoot two when we come back after a timeout.
Texas with a narrow two-point lead over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 30-28, 357 left to go before half. And Dave, first of two games this week here, Houston Baptist, who fell today to the Rice Owls. The Huskies will be here on Thursday night for a 7 o'clock tip here on the Mean Green Sports Network. And we're also carrying these games on YouTube. Go to Mean Green Sports on YouTube. You'll hear Dave and I and get to watch. We're on TuneIn as Mark Kedrick Bell gets the first free throw to fall. These teams only had one point from the line so far. This one could tie it with 3.57 to go in the half. And the senior from Starkville, Mississippi, rattles that one in. He has a 12-point half. He averages eight points per game. More of a rebounder for them. They're leading rebounder at 5.7. Tied at 30. In green against the zone. Got a three-point look and good from the far wing by Ruben Jones. Now 9 of 17 from deep. The freshman from Houston Yates, 33-30. Guarded by George Ivory III, the son of the head coach, and there was a little bump after the release there, but no whistle. Raquan Morris puts on a dribbling show, and his pass deflected high in the air by Jones, taken down by J.J. Murray, drives and gets hammered and lands hard, but quickly helped to his feet by his teammates. J.J. Murray knew the contact was coming. He dribbled slowly into the lane and angled himself in, prepared for the uh, the harm that would come, and now a chance at the free throw line to get himself in the books offensively this first half. These will be his first two free throws of the year. Trying to extend a three-point lead with 3.21 to go in the half, and the first one is no good off the back rim. Starting to get some of those minutes that his buddy D.J. Draper would gobble up a year ago. Draper, of course, one of those great uh, shooters from downtown. Second free throw good, J.J.'s first point tonight. J.J. less the three-point sniper, more the all-around player and especially the defender. Steal in the backcourt by Jones, goes up, rejected, and taken down by Bell. Quality double team created that. Morris dribbles right into a trap. And nowhere to go. Finally finds a bounce pass open for Ivory. Down left of the lane for Doss. Jumper no good, back rim, rebound Simmons. Still only two points for Sean Doss. Underneath for a layup by Bell. Bell with six, Hamlet with six, starting to get some balance around, Reese with five. And from seven down to six up, this is the biggest lead of the game with 240 and a half, 36 to 30. Simmons way out defensively, following Banyard for a Bell three, and it barely draws higher. Long rebound taken by Jones. Dean Green with numbers. Ruben, no look, baseball pass down low, and an offensive foul called on Hamlet. Mm. Hamlet's a guy who plays in control almost all the time, but he's now picked up two first half fouls. He didn't foul out of a single game a year ago, despite the enormous number of minutes that he played, but Hamlet now with a pair. And the timeout called by Grant McCaslin. With 2.25 remaining in the half and the lead at 36-30. An 11-0 run earlier, come from seven back, and a 6-0 run now over the last minute 20. Well, I've been working with Zach Babb to come up with a lot of Golden Triangle Ball trivia tonight, Dave, because you're normally so up on anything we throw at you. So here's my first volley, okay? Okay. Arkansas Pine Bluff produced what NFL talent that played alongside Mean Joe Green? L.C. Greenwood. Very good. All right, Bab, I'm 0 for 1. You're up <laughs> next later on. Well, I knew it wasn't Dwight White. He was from then East Texas State, now Texas a and Commerce. But L.C. Greenwood, yep. Part of that steel curtain. 36-30, Pine Bluff trailing. Back at it with 2.10 to go in the first half. And Sean Doss, Jr., a frustrating first half for the leading scorer. Stop and go drive and commits an offensive foul. Charge drawn by Reuben Jones, who learns fast as a freshman. Doss tried to take it right into the teeth of a double team, but a bit out of control there. It's a guy that has the ultimate green light. Shoot it any time you want, but that time, bad decision against two defenders. Doss just one for four. He does have seven rebounds, however. And two turnovers now. 36-30 mean green, 150 and a half. And Simmons, about 30 feet farther out than he usually is, 
to help move the ball. Hands over to Bell, and now Hamlet at the point. Crossover and foul as he gets a step past Daquan Morris. Morris with his first. Senior from Pine Bluff. And team foul number five. Lions have certainly made the mean green extend on the perimeter and take more time. That's a heady move by Hamlet to have a little bit of the, uh, the movement to draw the whistle, get the attention of the official. Joshua Johnson will check back in for, well, first it was going to be for Kayshawn Stokes, who had just checked in. Instead, it's going to be for Markedrick Bell. We'll see how long he sits. He's got 12 of their 30 back to play. It's now a 2-3 zone look. Jones and Hamlet out front. JV on no-look feed. Corner Reese underneath Simmons. Two dribbles and an offensive foul. He was trying to maneuver for a hook and uh, doing the flop to perfection to draw the offensive foul was Terrence Banyard. Well, Simmons certainly lowered the shoulder, but looked like Banyard did a terrific timed acting job to really flop violently there and get the whistle. And so Simmons now has to be careful with a buck 29. He doesn't want to pick up a attacking one. And he's got two. Johnson brings it up. Listed at 5'9", 160. That seems too big for him. I would guess 5'5", five, five, just eyeballing it. Good job getting Simmons out to not even have to worry about that third foul. Moving into the paint and traveling. The turnover by Sean Doss. James Reese can be a pest. That's part of what he does well. Offensively, certainly he brings a lot to the table, but defensively, he can just wear you out. Their 10th turnover, three by Doss. One minute to go, first half, Green Green up six. Still on a 6-0 run over the last two minutes, 45 seconds. Pine Bluff scoreless for three. Pass underneath for Bell is not controlled, and as he goes to the deck, trying to keep it in bounds, he loses it out of bounds. Hot potato action that time, and it ricochets off. Bell trying to work between two lines to come up with a loose ball. Turnover number six coming by the main green. Joshua Johnson at the left quarter court hash. Drives in, kicks to the near corner for Morris. Side cleared, he'll go one-on-one -on -one past McBride, hangs in the air, and a spectacular finish underneath. Athletic wing looking for baskets in transition, showing he can angle himself to the window and get the improbable shot. NBA level finish that time. Transfer from Cahoma Junior College. B. Green holding for the last shot. With 12 to shoot, 15 on the game clock. And Hamlet dribbling time down. Down to six to shoot. Off a high bell pick. Backs out. Four, three to shoot. Into the lane. Banker no at the shot clock buzzer. And there should be at least 1.4 seconds on the game clock, which the officials will now confer to decide. Yeah, the Lions are getting ready to head down the floor, but that's a shot clock violation. So they're going to have to work an inbounds here. And that's... It's going to allow for some defensive pressure if the Mean Green want to put it. So they got plenty of time to get a shot off. They'll have to travel the entire length, though, 1.4 seconds. J.J. Murray first will hurry into the game and replace Hamlet. Nobody on the inbounder. Inbounding Kayshawn Stokes throws to midcourt. And just able to keep it in bounds, and that's it, was Banyard. So no chance of a shot. And uh, the Mean Green head to the locker room on top 30. Mental health affects us all, whether you finish first or last. Whether you win or lose. The stigma around these issues causes those around us to suffer in silence. Mental health is nothing to be ashamed of. You are not alone. You are not alone. As a student athlete. As a teammate. As a friend. We pledge to continue the conversation. Because it matters. Because you matter. Stand up to the stigma. Stand up. Stand up. Continue the conversation. You are not alone.
Didn't hit it. Golden Lions inbound to begin the second half and work it around the horn to Joshua Johnson crowded by Hamlet on the far wing. Bounce into the far corner for Doss and knock out of his hands by Reese. And no doubt, Hank, George Ivory spent a good part of his halftime trying to get some plays designed to get Sean Doss into this game. Just one for four. Inbounds pass is chased down way in the backcourt by Johnson with five on the shot clock. He's got a race to the other end with three, with two. A leaning one-hander off in time but short and rebounded by Simmons. Not as good as you can do considering he went back and forth the full 96 twice. Hamlet drives, dishes for McBride, three, and he swishes from the left corner. Loving those rims here at the pit. McBride had some trouble on the road against really stout competition, but here he has been dynamite from downtown. Third three of the night, 39-32. Me and Green have their biggest lead, and they force the turnover. Pass inside, intended for Doss. Knocked out of bounds. Seems like every time you see a turnover committed by Pine Bluff, James Reese is in the vicinity Called him a pest in the first half, and I mean that in a complimentary manner. Pine Bluff led by seven, then a 17 to four Mean Green run from 814 to 232 remaining in the first half. Second half starts with that McBride three. And Hamlet double teamed and fouled. On the reach, Daquan Morris picks up his second. They corrected scoring totals for Pine Bluff at halftime. We uh, both had Mark Kedrick Bell with 12. They had him with 10 and gave two of his to Morris. They got it right down. Six for Morris, 12 for Bell. Victory for the Bean Green Sports Network. And leads all scorers. Inbounds, Hamlet. Pivots around in the paint. Kicks it out to the point to Reese. Bounce down low, goes to Simmons. Long stride in, throws down a right-handed hook right in the face of Terrence Banyard. And it's a nine-point lead, 41-32. Much more emphatic in terms of that low post move than Simmons was in the first half. Like that aggression. 18-15 to play. And Green in control. High low feed goes down to Bell. Double team, back out for Johnson straight on three. No good, rebounded by Bell for the Mean Green. Bell on Bell, and the North Texas Bell rang the loudest on that defensive stop. Hamlet with his trademark running floater, no good, back rim chased down by Johnson. A la West Virginia, in the other end of the court, a leaner in transition by Doss, no good, but he'll shoot two. Javion in Morgantown able to get that trademark running floater from in the paint. 10 to 14 feet, made it in the first half there, missed consistently off the back rim in the second half. He misses that same shot to start this second half and sends Doss to the line, where he's only a 61% shooter so far this year. He hits the first free throw. Averages 16.9 per game, third best in the SWAC. That's just his third point. You hope that free throws don't get him on track. That foul was on James Reese, his first, trying to get back and hustle back defensively. Doss rattles in the second, 41-34. First points of the second half for the Golden Lions. Well traveled, they will not play a home game until January 2nd, in the open swack play in Pine Bluff against Mississippi Valley. Maneuvering on the low left block is Simmons and almost stripped from behind by Banyard, not able to keep it in bounds. He knocked it into the left corner. The Mean Green will inbound with 12 to shoot. Terrence Banyard was giving it great hustle, but unfortunately, that pumpkin bounced right off his forehead and out of bounds. In the deep left corner, Thomas Bell guarded by Markedrick Bell. The inbounds pass knocked out of bounds by Daquan Morris. Dave, tonight you and I are behind safety plexiglass. I guess that's trying to keep us away from the kids and the kids away from us, but that ball would have shattered some. Inbounds pass by Bell, stolen in midcourt by Johnson. Feet down low to Morris, misses and rebounded underneath by Hamlet. Nice snow call. Hamlet brings it all the way underneath to Simmons, reverses, misses, rebounded by Banyard. Mm, tried the English on the left to right, up and under, but too much off the glass for Zach Simmons. Zach was loading up for a jam, forced to alter in midair. Couldn't get the reverse down. Bell for Pine Bluff, left of the circle. Three minutes gone, second half. Now to Doss. Starts guarded by McBride. Fall away, left of the lane, short, rebounded by Reese. 
It remains 41-34, Mean Green by seven. Trying to end a three-game losing streak, three losses, two at SEC schools, and one at number 11, West Virginia. Hamlet cross-court to Reese. Up fake, drives, bounce underneath. They find Simmons. Two fakes and rejected from behind by Banyard, and the loose ball knocked out of bounds by Thomas Bell as Banyard's knocked off his feet, and a hard landing. Thomas Bell coming in from the left corner, really crashing hard into Banyard, and I think Banyard took it, you know, right. Looks like he's grabbing... Well, maybe just his midsection all together there, but he definitely took the brunt of the collision. Thomas Bell, who has a pretty powerful upper body. And the uh, trainer out to take a look at Terrence Banyard while we pause here 10 seconds for station identification as you listen to Bean Green Basketball. Aaron Spanyard helped to his feet after being fouled by Thomas Bell, a 6 8 senior from Milwaukee. Will apparently try and shake it off and stay in the game, but his coach will get him a breather. And uh, Alvin Shreddick Jr. out of Ben Vleck High School in Bay City, Texas, will check in for Banyard. Yeah, Banyard took a, a pretty good little jolt there. He's better off to. Try to return, certainly he feels better, but get out of there right now. So Golden Lions will inbound against full court pressure. 16-38 remaining. They trail 41-34. Team that's done nothing but travel. They were the mean green all they want. Aquan Morse, left-hand dribble at the point. Seniors stay home. He is Pine Bluff product. Delay drive down the baseline and a blocking foul underneath. It's going to be called on J.J. Murray. Trying to get set and take one of those trademark Grant McCaslin coach charges. Last year, that was a huge part of the pedigree of this team, and they've started off with uh, some pretty nice efforts in the charge department. Didn't work that time. First foul on Murray. Abu Uzman in for the first time. Go to Lions, throw it into Streetick. Bounce into the lane for a leaning slam by Sean Doss, Jr. Executed to perfection. Six for Doss. Margin is five. And that might be what really... Uh, Knocks the lid off the seal for Doss. Really impressive dunk. Ruben Jones in. That goes to work with a bounce left elbow of the paint to Usman. Palms it with a right hand, double teamed, and is fouled. He got hacked by the helping defender. And that was Alvin Stredick Jr., his second team, second timeout. 15 59 remaining. Bean Green 41, Arkansas Pine Bluff 36 on Learfield IMG College. a Zach Babb question, but that will <laughs> require some chewing. Well, you were witness to a number one battle, correct? Hamlet will inbound underneath to Guzman, hands it back to Javion, and finds Ruben Jones for three, and it won't crawl in. Four tries on the rim, rattles out, rebounded by Stredick, and Joshua Johnson to bring it up. 
Down 41-36, 15-40 remaining in the game. Pass goes up high to Bell. Bell guarded by Bell. Kiedrick against Thomas, down to the baseline to Doss, and drives right around to Usman and lays it in, and they have successfully gotten Sean Doss involved in their offense. Six of his eight here in the first four and a half minutes of the second half. Hamlet kicks outside for Bell. Jones between the circles, Usman. Right wing now, Hamlet. Lead down to three. JV on under drive. Floater on the baseline is good. Good to see that coming back around. It's been off and on a bit tonight, but you can so Hamlet's starting to work things out on his floater. Nine point lead had been cut to three. Now back to five, five minutes gone to the second half. Uh, pass over the corner, chased down by Johnson. To Stretic, cross court Doss, up fake, pulls up baseline and hits the side of the glass, rebounded by Usman. Thought he was getting on a real roll until that offering. Hamlet takes his time, gets into the lane, floater won't go this time, and an over the back foul on Usman. Going over the back, in this case, of Daquan Morris. Well, or did they just say out of bounds off Abu? Abu is 6'10, 250. He's lost 24 pounds since coming on board here. And Getting Andrew Wright to work him in the right ways in that strength and conditioning room, but he's too big to be climbing over the back. That's going to be an easy whistle. It's his first, team's fourth. Golden Lions ball down five, 14 and a half to play. Alvin Stredick Jr., Zach Simmons back in guard. Him pass down low, tipped high in the air by Michael Robinson. And Murray brings it the other way, feeding Simmons. Hemmed in by four defenders underneath. And uh, loses control of it and finally will be called for a three-second violation. Grant McCasin explodes off the bench and is really trying to get an explanation there. But it's pretty clear. They called three seconds. They counted three seconds in the lane. And Simmons was camped out for a while trying to work on that. So that's probably the only three-second violation call we'll see this year. That's a rule that's almost not even a rule anymore. So rarely is it whistled, but it was here. Golden Lions again down five. Under 14 minutes remaining. Bell loses control in the paint. Going to the deck to take it is Michael Robinson, and he's held up. And uh, the main green will have the possession arrow after a timeout. 13.54 remaining in the Super Pit. 43-38, main green leading Arkansas Pine Bluff. Mental health affects us all, whether you finish first or last. Whether you win or lose. The stigma around these issues causes those around us to suffer in silence. Mental health is nothing to be ashamed of. You are not alone. You are not alone. As a student athlete. As a teammate. As a friend. We pledge to continue the conversation. Because it matters. Because you matter. Stand up to the stigma. Stand up. Stand up. Continue the conversation. You are not alone. responsible for remembering it because obviously I did not call it, so it's all on you. <laughs> yeah, but you've always been a, a wonderful fan. Well, the one that I remember the most was at Fog Island Fieldhouse against a top-ranked Kansas team, but there might have been something prior to that. I think Kansas was in the top ten. They were like seven or eight, maybe. A Kansas... A Kansas... A Kansas grad, and it took you that long well, to remember that I thought there was one game. in between that one. Out of the timeout, JV on Hamlet pulls up and knocks down a 15-footer. He's got 10, 45-38 back up seven. Creighton was fairly up there when we played them. Okay. Gotcha. But you didn't go to Creighton. Man. No, I know. I know. Alvin Stredek trying to drive on Simmons. Loses it out of bounds. Turnover by the Golden Lions. He is their 14th. 
Dean Green have coughed it up only eight times. And their advantage on the scoreboard is due to points off turnovers, 16 to a 7. A lot of active hands tonight and getting after it up. Loose balls on the floor. Hamlet cut off in the paint and fouled as he gets a step on Markedrick Bell. Bell with a reach, picks up his second team's third. Hamlet last year, part of his impressive player of the year, newcomer of the year resume was not only the offensive exploits of shooting the ball, but his free throws, 93%. And the first free throw is good. He has now hit 14 of 15. Johnson replaced by Jalen Lynn. Surprising we're just now seeing him. Came off the bench and knocked down three trays in the first half. Second free throw, Hamlet got him both. 12 of the game for Javion. And the biggest lead now matched up nine. 13 minutes remaining, 47-38. North Texas. Daquan Morris. Right quarter court. Feed to Stredek High. And his pass down low for Doss. Leans in. Misses. Harassed into the miss by Michael Robinson. Touch last out of bounds by the Bean Green. Michael Robinson. Did not get into any of the three games on the road, Arkansas, Mississippi State, or West Virginia. But in for a couple of stretches here. Checks back out now. Reese re-enters. And the, the Lions inbound to Morris. A look down low for Bell. Misses jump hook. Terrence Lewis, the second, just into the game. And he controls the board. Very impressive rebound right there in traffic. And with stopping foul line. Back out between the circles to Reese. Back to Hamlet. And he'll size things up from the point. Guarded by Morris. Reese far side. Bounce elbow of the paint for Lewis. Out to the wing, Hamlet. Eight to shoot. Lewis there to offer a pick. And Javion through traffic to Robinson from the near corner. A three no good. Just got it off in time. Rebounded by Stretter. Didn't move off the ball screens quick enough on that possession. Jalen Lynn out of Mid-South Junior College, junior from Collierville, Tennessee, to Morris. Can't beat Hamlet off the dribble, backs out. Hands it over to Lynn, listed at 6'1", 170. Looks much smaller, guarded by Reuben Jones. Eight on the shot clock, kicks to the corner to Bell. Drives, fall away is no good, and rebounded by Lewis. Markedrick Bell took the rough angle to try to get that shot. It looked like the baseline was open earlier. Stop and go drive by Hamlet. Runner off the glass, around and out. No good, rebounded by Dawes. Quickly pushes it up for Morris. Hamlet very human tonight on that uh, drive to the bucket. Dawes calls for it low, gets it, flips it in and out. Wouldn't stay, Lewis pulls down the rebound. Snake bit night for Sean Dawes. And the Mean Green still looking to get their first double digit lead of the game with 11-10 remaining, stuck on 47-38. As Reuben Jones launches and swishes the three from the right corner. Boy, he was in the extended right corner where he had an angle to overcome on that uh, triple. But he cuts the cords nonetheless, and a half a hundred's on the board. Second of the night for Reuben. Now with eight, 50-38, biggest lead by either team. Lynn loses the ball out of bounds. Harassed defensively by Reuben Jones. And a timeout with 10-50. When COVID-19 disrupted everything, we did what we do best. When we could no longer be together, we still found ways to stay close. When the number one goal is to help students achieve their dreams, we overcome any obstacle, bringing education and opportunity for 130 years with a resilient, caring, and creative spirit. The University of North Texas, where education never stops.
Beach Bowl from Conway, South Carolina. It will kick off at 1.30. And our pregame will kick off at 12.30. Appalachian State much better so far on the football field than on the basketball court. They visited number Tennessee tonight, and they fell 79-38. I think it's going to be a tough football matchup, though. When you look at Appalachian State coming into the year, a ranked team, and they certainly had uh, a lot less starts and stops than the Mean Green. Eight and three, their record. Out of the timeout, Green Grand Ball. Mark Res McBride has returned. Zach Simmons has it up high. Over to Jones. And Jones crowded. Uh, Sean Doss taken away by Dequan Morris, and he'll drive and get a reverse backward jam. Yeah, a little style on that as he got the double clutch in before delivering the irons. Morris cashing in his own steal. First points of the half. Bounce inside Jones to Simmons and a whistle on Morris. He picks up his third foul, team's fourth. And Jalen Lynn. Will head back out, replaced by the starter, Joshua Johnson. Mean Green with 18 points off of turnovers and 18 points in the paint. They were trying to go deep in a moment ago. Ruben Jones underneath, inbounding left corner. Zach Simmons goes into his back to the basket moves against Stredig. Throws down a left-handed hook. And there's your 20th point inside the paint. Nice secure move by Zachary Simmons, who's a lot more deliberate in the second half. Six for Zach. Halfway gone in the second half. An air ball jump hook by Morris. Rebounded but lost underneath by Stredick. Mean green ball. Zach Simmons didn't get the rebound, but he used his body to make sure Stredick didn't have any room to land inbounds. And Fine Bluff for right now going to retreat and probably get set back in that zone. They don't put any pressure on it backwards. Jalen Lynn quickly re-entering in place of Daquan Morris. Mean green ball up 12, biggest lead so far. 52-40, Jones pounds it down low, baseline left, Simmons, right-handed dribbles, turns, Rady Hook, and he throws it down. Big difference in Zach Simmons' first half versus second half, and second half variety is fun to watch. Now the lead, 14, 54-40, nine and a half minutes remaining. Bell against Bell, Mark Hedrick, right side cleared, pulls up, misses from 15. Rebound flat-footed taken by Simmons. Yep, just dropped right in Zach's lap. Reuben Jones brings it into the lane, hits a running banker. That's going to be enough for a timeout taken by George Ivory, the dean of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. It's one thing to put up with Hamlet's drives, but now you got to contend with Reuben Jones as well. Jones with 10. His last two games, against Mississippi State, about as impressive as a freshman could be. Led the scoring with 14 points, four out of five threes. And those shots not falling at West Virginia when it was just two out of eight. Got a couple from deep on just three tries, four out of seven for 10 points in this game. This game still led by Hamlet's 12 points on five out of 11. And Marquise Bell with 12, Daquan Morris with 10. Top scores for the Golden Lions. Out of the timeout against full court pressure. Lynn inbounding to Johnson. George Ivory going with both his point guards on the floor at the same time. And Johnson beating Jones all the way down and hits a runner, beating the entire set full court defense. Using that 5-9 frame to slip past a lot of bigger bodies and penetrate. That's a good finish. First points of the game. Three, no good by Jones, and a foul as Zach Simmons pulls down the offensive rebound. Fouled by Joshua Johnson, who beat it all the way down to the other end of the floor. And at 5-9, trying to defend the 6-10 Simmons. Gets his first and the team's fifth. Jones. Freshman entrusted to inbound it underneath into the corner. McBride. Bounce, elbow of the paint. Simmons backing down, Stredick. Spins, left hand hook. No good, but he draws contact and will shoot two. Become an ISO show in the uh, low blocks for Zach Simmons as he just kind of probed his way that time against Stredick. Put him in some foul concern, at least, with his third. And next foul will 
be the seventh for Pine Bluff. To the line, Zachary Simmons misses short on the first. Two points on one for five shooting at West Virginia's first game under double figures. And following its fifth career double-double at Mississippi State, 11 points, 12 rebounds. Second free throw in and out, pulled down one-handed by Doss. Still 56-42, driving, scooping, scoring, high off the glass, Jalen Lynn. And that's how you attack the basket after a couple of missed free throws. Keeps you right in the game if you're pine ball. Lynn to double number is with 11. Lead down to 12, under eight and a half. Again, the Mean Green pounded low for Simmons. Lefty hook throws it up and down over Stretton. Simmons really feeling it in the second half. And remember, magic numbers when he hits five or more Field goals, North Texas almost automatic. Well, that was his fifth. Mean Green are 24 and six in his four years with at least five made baskets. Eight minute mark remaining, 58-44. Traveling called as Sean Doss drags his pivot foot. Guarded tightly by Reese, and here come some freshmen. We have a voice. You, you have, have a voice. voice. We, we have, have a voice. voice. Our voices can be heard outside of sports. As student athletes, we have a platform. Now more than ever, it's important that we listen, learn, learn and lead, and raise our voices for change. We can all do more. Now is the time to make a difference. This is our chance. This is our chance to make a better tomorrow. Together, Together we will continue the conversation. We, we have, have a voice. voice. Hi folks, Chris Fowler here, Noseki's new poor by poor commentator. Hey, a job's a job. Now, onto the poor. Look at it run. The ice cold, refreshing cerveza rushes toward the 10th blue announce line. There's no stopping this crisp and delicious cerveza now. It's at the 11, 11.5, 11.6. .5, Will it reach 12? There it is, 12 fluid ounces. Unbelievable. I'm crying. I'm actually crying right now. Noseki's, a most interesting beer down on the low post by Zachary Simmons. And now for the game at 53%. Pine Bluff this half just 5 of 16. And for the game at 40%. 18 out of 45. They're 4 of 10 from 3. Mean Green 6 of 14, 43%. From long distance, out-rebounded 28-22 by the Golden Lions. Out-rebounded 7-2 on the offensive glass. Outscored in second chance points 4-2, but Mean Green dominating the paint, 26-18, and points off turnovers, 18-9. And North Texas ball out of the timeout. Again, down low to Simmons, who is foul from behind, an arm bar by Stretic. That's his fourth. That's the team's seventh. The Mean Green get the one-and-one one with 7.49 remaining. Simmons has pretty much willed the Pine Bluff Lions into foul trouble here moving them into the bonus. Now he needs to take advantage. Misses, but Thomas Bell there to capture the offensive rebound. Kick it out to Reese. Murray with a three, and he got it from the left corner. Well, JJ now with more three-pointers, Hank, that he had all of last year. <laughs> I think it's the beginning of something that's going to flourish right in front of Meat Green fans' eyes. JJ Murray's going to start becoming that guy from downtown. He's a Juco All-America. At uh, Eastfield Junior College, 7.20 remaining. Stretic into the right corner. Robert Boyd has made his first appearance. Yeah. Launching a three deep in the right corner. No good by Johnson, rebounded by Hamlet. And Javion, waiting for his teammates to get set. High post pick by Simmons. Pick and fade, out to Zach, back to Javion. Pulls up at the foul line, bounce elbow the paint. Simmons turning on Stretic for fouls. Left hand hook, no good, but a late whistle, and that might be it for Stretic. Simmons and Hamlet were really a two person team on that possession. Simmons tried to set a ball screen, Hamlet didn't find any room, so he gets it back to Zach down low, and then Zach has just been finding a way to either score or draw the foul inside the low lane. A lot of work for Zach Simmons in the second half. 
So Alvin Stredick fouls out as Zach Simmons finally gets a free throw to rattle in. He was 0 for his first three. And you wonder, too, with a senior with all the experience, tonight his 75th consecutive start, did they have to tell him to be more aggressive at halftime, or does he just know innately, okay, I've got to pick up my game? Because he certainly has. Both free throws good. Lead is now 19, 63, 44. Seven unanswered points over the last minute and a half. It looks to me like not only did they tell Zach, they told everybody else to feed Zach. I mean, this is the offense in the second half. Pound it low again and again and again. Really more consistently than I could ever remember. And it's paying off. Close game, not close anymore. Six and a half to play. Around the horn, into the right corner, Robert Boyd. To the wing to Doss. Five on the shot clock. Doss against James Reese. Drives in, leans and creates contact. And uh, the whistle will go against Thomas Bell. Well, the book on Doss is the ultimate green light. He loves the mid post and the fadeaways. For a guy that normally takes at least 17 shots a game, he doesn't mind attacking the double team or even the rare triple team, which he did there. So Doss at the line to shoot two, and he hits the first. We're out of Marion, Arkansas. Their leading score all but two of their first seven games. Tonight, the season low was uh, their last outing. Only seven points on three for 11 shooting at Tulane. Has seven now and has eight. Going to try to get some cosmetic points before the night's over. 625 still left to play. I don't know that he can get to his uh, average, but Doss might. 63-46, that ending the 7-0 main green run. Hamlet taking his time on the near quarter court. Now drives and draws a reach foul on Daquan Morris. And now he has four. And the team, nine. Well, North Texas is a team doing a good job targeting those Lions who already had some foul issues. Stredick fouled out because he couldn't handle Simmons down low. And now, as you mentioned, Morris in some real trouble. Run it, no good. Rebound, Bell back up, scores with a left-hand follow. Thomas Bell, so good on the glass, but also on the quick attack. He knew exactly what he was going to do there after grabbing the glass. Not many plays set up for Thomas Bell, but he earns all his points with the dirty word. 65-46, under six minutes remaining. Thomas, first points this half, eight for the game. Right at his average. Sean Doss trying to split a double team. Draws contact from Reese. James Reese called for a hand check. That's his second. Dream Dowling said earlier this year that statistics are like a bikini. They reveal a lot, but not everything. And Thomas Bell is our bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Think that's, about that for a little bit. That's the Higginbotham quote <laughs> for year. every game the rest of the season. Offensive foul called on Johnson after the inbounds pass, and he went to work from the head of the key and threw a clearing elbow. Some call for his second, and now 10 against the team. Five and a half minutes to go. Dean Green up 19. And going to work on the low block, Lewis. Lewis foul from behind. A knee by Robert Boyd leaning in on him. Boyd, 6'6", junior out of Memphis. Now you're kind of getting to grind it out time. Five and a half minutes left. There's going to be a lot of free throws. A chance for some of these guys who want to pad their stats and get those per game averages up to hit their free throws. Terrence Lewis <laughs> on the first. He is now for the year six of six. I think they want him ideally to be more of a shooter. Normal range is in the five to ten foot range, but that's going to come for a guy that was a junior college All-American. New Mexico junior college. Second free throw also good. So Terrence, good for four off the bench. Product of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Lead is 21 for the first time. 67-46. No buckets for the Golden Lions over the last three and a half minutes. And Johnson hounded at the point by Murray. Devontae Doolittle checking in in place of Morris as a one-hander goes by Javon Joshua Johnson. Right in the face of J.J. 
Murray. That is six hard fought points by the 5 9 point guard. 67 48. Yeah. Pretty bad uh, crossover move right there. Jumper knocked down by Reese, left of the circle. James perhaps relocating his jump shot. She's been missing of late. Three of five for the game. 69 48. Bob down to Reese, trying to post. Defensively against Doss, and Doss leans into a rejection by Thomas Bell, knocked out of bounds, and Doss touched it last. Reese again pestering along that left baseline, and Bell just kind of sitting there poised like a cat, waiting for the moment to make that swat. J.J. Murray has it, left quarter court. To the very high post for Lewis, one dribble, hand back, Reese fires, hits a three in the James Reese jumper. A wall of late located tonight, 72-48. Started us off with a quick five points, and now has come up with five points in back-to-back -back trips down the floor. Four out of six, two of four from D. 24-point lead. We go under four minutes. Johnson kicking for Doolittle, and a three. No good. Rebounded by Murray. Golden Lions dropping back. Half court defense all the way through. With a left hand reverse, Hamlet. Starting to get things worked out on that finish. And inbounds pass stolen by Lewis. Lewis goes up underneath, no good. Grabs his own rebound and scores. That's a man that wants points. Lewis with a big defensive play. Couldn't score from the left. Rebounds his own miss on the right side and sticks it back. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. Are you paying for your checking account? Well, you don't have to. At Guarantee Bank & Trust, we have a better way. With Guarantee Green Checking, you get a free checking account with no minimum balance or monthly service fees. Even better, it comes with a free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, and free mobile banking. And over 55,000 surcharge free ATMs worldwide. Now that's a great value. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for Guarantee Green Checking today at gnty.com. Banking with a capital G. All right, Zach, 328 remaining here. The Mean Green have opened up a 28-point lead. They have outscored Arkansas Pine Bluff here in the second half, 40-16. to 16. The current run is nine unanswered points over a minute 24, 13-2 over the last two minutes and 47 seconds. They have hit seven of their last eight shots, shooting 63% this half and 58% for the game. Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the timeout. Johnson, down low to Morris. One dribble, reverses, and scores. Playing on some borrowed time with those four personal fouls, but still attacking when he gets a chance to come on Morris. Saquon the double numbers with 10, and we see Jalen Jackson for the first time in a couple of games. That white headband on always has a little flair about it. Sophomore from San Antonio Wagner driving, scoring on a nice crossover. Terrence Lewis, the second. Hank unleashing some moves here in the second half. Looked like the sea parted for him as he split right down the middle of the lane. And nice finish. And yes, he's come on here in the last five minutes. 78 50. Doss tries a three out front. No good. Rebounded by Bell. Mark Kedrick Bell back up in a sea of hands. Follows and scores his first points of the second half, and George Ivory will call his final timeout with 2.28 remaining. 
George Ivory, as we said, the dean of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. He's working hard with this team. He's still got to get him ready for one more tough game. Number two, Baylor awaits on the 21st. Hopefully Baylor will be able to get that game in. They have, um, in football and basketball, really been hammered by COVID. Yeah, everyone kind of goes through their own cycles with it. and uh, You don't know if that's going to happen to North Texas, men's or women's basketball. The same protocols have been in, but get the feeling maybe this men's basketball team can keep things nice and easy the rest of the year and glide through without a lot of starts and stops. That's the hope. Well, Brad McCaslin probably with uh, the group on the floor that will finish the game now up 78-52. And that includes Michael Robinson, the 6'7 freshman from Houston, who throws it in. Jalen Jackson controlling the point and fouled by Joshua Johnson. His third, and Jalen Jackson will shoot in the double bonus. Mentioned Jalen sports the white Nike headband, but he also has the most colorful shoes on the court. And he has a lot of shoes to choose from. Over 100 pairs. Neon yellow, neon orange stripes. There's free throw, no good back rim. It's a kid that had a quadruple double in high school. Have you ever seen that in person? Not in high school. Second free throw. No good, back rim. And uh, seeing his first action of the year of his career, Kobe Hargrove, a true freshman from Whitehall, Arkansas, pulls down the rebound. And Quan Morris has it right side high over to Johnson. We hit two minutes remaining. Johnson bounce pass. Morris pulls up, jump hook, no good, follows his own miss in. Good hustle late in the game that you know you're not going to win. It's Pine Bluff team. Road Warriors, like so many of the other teams out of the SWAC, but still some energy late. 78-54 with a minute 45. Lewis for Murray, left quarter court hash. Guarded by Doss. Sean Doss still with only eight points, a two for 11 shooting night. Michael Robinson driving from the right corner in with a left hand reverse, can't get it to fall. Lewis almost comes down with a rebound. Mark Hedrick Bell does. But as he does so, he steps on the end line and falls out of bounds. It'll be being green possession. Well, North Texas had players on the floor. Lewis was looking up, worried that maybe he was going to pick up that whistle. But instead, his hustle meant that the uh, Lions player was falling out of bounds. Hargrove out, George Ivory the third, freshman from Pine Bluff, son of the coach. In it comes to Lewis, who scores on a jump hook straight on and will shoot for the three-point play. This is a guy that has enjoyed mop-up time. Terrence Lewis II has come in, and uh, he's been the story in the final five minutes of this game for North Texas. Juco All-America at New Mexico. JC, 19 points, better than nine rebounds per game. Shot 60% from the field, 83% from the foul line, and at 14 double-doubles. He comes with some credentials. With the three-point play, free throw goes with a nice shooter's touch. He has yet to miss from the line in the main green uniform. Three for three tonight, eight for eight for the season. Can use more of that out of folks that like to attack the glass. You're going to make several trips to the charity stripe, get good at it, and obviously he's off to a fantastic start. 11 points on four for five from the field, four rebounds off the bench for Lewis. And it's 81-54. With a minute 10 remaining, wild leaning miss inside by Morris, chased down to the corner by Michael Robinson. His pass almost stolen by Doss, controlled by Mardrez McBride. Underneath, driving, Robinson to Jackson, double clutches in the lane, can't finish, rebound by Lewis. Knew exactly where it was going to come off the rim, kicks it back out for McBride. To control near the center jump circle with 43 seconds remaining. Trying to even out that rebound total, which was early on decidedly in favor of Pine Bluff. Jackson travels. Rocker stepped from the right corner, trying to drive against the much bigger 6'8 Marquis Bell. Jalen's really the only drama left. See if he can get uh, some points here before the final 30 seconds tick off. Biggest lead has been 28, it's 27 with 30 seconds remaining. And Johnson 
Almost has it stripped by Jalen Jackson. Gets it back and gets fouled by Jackson. Stopping the clock with 23.4. And now in the one and one. Arkansas and Pine Bluff. Very game effort from them in the first half. They led for over seven minutes by as many as seven points. As the front end goes for Johnson, but the second half just overpowered. It, it's a lot like what the uh, huge teams with the front lines of Mississippi State and West Virginia were doing to the Mean Green. That's what North Texas was able to do to the Golden Lions. Just wear out a team that obviously doesn't have quite the same size and also tired from their travels, but uh, Best of luck to the Lions once they get in the SWAC. They have a chance to maybe make some noise in that league once things even out. They start playing one another. Johnson hit both. 81-56 as Margrez McBride dribbling out the clock with 10 seconds remaining. And that's how this game will end. So for the third year in a row, Golden Lions come into the Super Pit. And the main green come away with a win. This one to end their three-game losing streak and improve their record to two and three as Arkansas Pine Bluff falls to one and seven. Final 81-56, Mean Green. Stay with us, the Texas Health Presbyterian postgame show is next. This is Mean Green Basketball from Learfield IMG College. 